Hi, welcome back. We're in lecture 13 on moderation, and we're in segment two where we have to do some sort of tedious work, some housekeeping, if you will, uh, to center predictors, which you'll see will actually make interpreting the results of a moderation analysis much simpler. Uh, so in segment three, we'll then rerun our example from segment one with our predictors centered, and hopefully you'll see how centering helps. So what does it mean to center predictors? It's very simple. It just means to take your predictor variable and put it into deviation form. That is, just create deviation scores instead of the raw scores. We did that back when we learned how to calculate variance, right? It was the first step. We took our raw scores, found the mean, and then we created deviation scores by taking each score and subtracting the mean. Those were the deviation scores. To get variance, of course, we then squared them and summed them and got sums of squares. Uh, here, we just need the deviation score. What that does for us is it gives us an average for a single predictor x that's equal to zero. So after centering, if we take the average, the mean will be zero. That's going to be really helpful. So in this segment, I'll show you how centering works. And I also want to talk about, conceptually, why center. Um, and there are two reasons. Um, one is the conceptual piece. Um, there's another that's just a purely mathematical or statistical reason uh, that requires, uh, particularly in moderation analysis, uh, why centering is required. So let's talk about the conceptual uh, reason behind this. So let's take a completely different example. Let's suppose we're running a multiple regression where we're trying to predict a young child's verbal ability. And we're trying to predict that from the, the, the mom's uh, vocabulary, so say mother's score on a vocabulary test, and the child's age. Well, remember that the intercept, or the regression coefficient, b sub 0, it's the predicted score on y when all predictors are 0. So when x is 0 and when z is 0. In this example, that doesn't make any sense, right? Why would I want the predicted score of a child's verbal ability when the child is 0, <laughs> and the mom scored 0 on a vocabulary test? That will give me a meaningless regression constant uh, B sub zero. And that's been the case in a lot of the examples I've shown you thus far in multiple regression. We've had regression constants that just didn't make any sense. They were sort of off the charts, right? They, they didn't show up on our scatter plots. Uh, and that's because we haven't centered our predictors. Um, so when we center the predictor down here in the bottom line of my slide is what I'm getting to. So if x is 0 and z is 0, well, 0 is now the average. So b sub 0, our regression constant, that's going to be the predicted score on y for a child of average age who has a mom with an average vocabulary. Now that's a meaningful value. So this will help us in interpreting those regression coefficients that we see in the R output if we just center all our continuous predictors. Also remember that the regression coefficient b1 is the slope for x assuming an average score on any other predictor, x2, x3, here, z, right? Um, and if there's no moderation, that's cool, that's fine. It, that's going to be representative of all the other uh, values on all the other predictors. Uh, much like the mean is representative of the entire sample if you don't have uh, any skew or outliers or things. Um, but if you do have a moderator variable and you do have a moderation effect, what that implies is that a single regression coefficient relating x to y is not sufficient because there's this other variable that exists that says, hey, the slope representing x to y is actually changing as a function of this moderator variable z. 
So one regression coefficient, B1, is not sufficient to account for the true relationship that exists between x and y. You need a moderator variable to do that, to show that the relationship is changing as a function of some other variable. That's the power of a moderation analysis, and we'll illustrate that. Um, to show this graphically, I think this really helps um, to wrap your head around what centering is doing and how it's changing the regression constant and the regression constant only. It doesn't change the slopes. It doesn't change the overall R squared, for example. Um, so there's nothing to really worry about here. It's not like a transformation of data. Uh, it's a really simple step um, that's basically just changing the scales on your graphs. That's, that's all it's doing. So here I'm presenting an example of an uncentered model that's purely additive. So there's no moderation going on in this example. It's just we have x, we have z, and the relationship between x and y is perfectly consistent across all values of z. And that's why uh, this is flat here. Another way to say this is these different colored bars, this light blue one, this purple one, this white one, they all have the same slope, right? So the slope relating x to y does not change as a function of z. That's why there's no moderation here. If we look at the regression equation, we see the regression constant is 2. That's the predicted score on y when all x are 0, or sorry, all, all predictors, x and z. Uh, that's right here on our graph. So here's where x and z are 0. If I go across, a little hard to do with my stylus, but I got there. Um, you'll see it, I'm, I'm about 2 on the y-axis. Uh, the slope relating x to y is 0.6. The slope relating z to y is 0.2. Uh, you can see this slope relating x to y is a little steeper than this slope relating z to y. Right? So this one here was 0.6. This one here is 0.2. So now let's center our continuous predictors. So if I center them, then the regression constant will change, but the slopes will not. So you see that the slopes are the same. The slope re relating x to y is still 0.6. The slope re relating z to y is still 0.2. But the regression constant is now 6. Why is that? It's because the regression constant is the predicted score on y when all other predictors are zero. Well, where is that in the graph now? Well, here's x of zero, here's z of zero. So to find where that point is, it's like somewhere in there. And if I go across to y, I'm around six. That's a little harder for me to demonstrate with my stylus, but hopefully you can see that the origin in this three-dimensional graph is now here, whereas before centering, it was down here in the corner. Okay, so the only thing that changed, this is the most important part of this, the only thing that changed as a function of centering is this guy right here, the regression constant. The slopes do not change. Now let's look at an uncentered model with a moderation effect. Looks much different, right? That's because the slope relating x to y changes as a function of z. That's a moderation effect. It's non-additive. And you see that with this, this staircase here. So the slope down here at the low end of z is not nearly as strong as the slope at the high end of z. So clearly a moderation effect going on here. So this is still an uncentered model. So the origin in this three-dimensional graph is down here in the corner, just like in the additive model. Uh, so our regression constant is two, just like the previous example. So it's the predicted score on y when all the predictors are zero. So you know, here's zero, we go across, we're at two. 
we have a slope of 0.6 for x, a slope of 0.2 for z, but now we have this product term that's demonstrating a significant moderation effect. And again, it's showing that the relationship between x and y changes as a function of z. Now let's center that model, and what you see is, first of all, the regression constant changes, right, because again, it's the predicted score uh, on y when the predictors are zero, so again, that's somewhere in the middle of this three-dimensional plot, so like somewhere in here. So if I'm right about there, go across, I'm at about 16. I shot a little high there with my stylus, but it's about 16 on the y-axis. Notice that these slopes did change, uh, but the slope of the higher order term, that is the product term, did not change. So if we go back, you see the slope for the, mediation, or for the moderation effect is 0.4. After centering, the slope is still 0.4. And that will always be the case that the highest order term, that slope won't change because that's what's most critical. If you have a moderation effect, then that's what you want to focus on. That's your story. Because what it's saying is these slopes, these lower order terms, those aren't reliable across all values of the other variables. So why would I make a big story about those, right? What I want to do is talk about the moderation effect. Uh, but the nice thing about centering is when I center, it's giving me the slope uh, relating x to y at an average level of z, and likewise relating z to y at an average level of x. So even if there is moderation lurking out there somewhere and you don't test for it, if you center your predictors, at least you're getting the best estimate you can because this blue, for example, this blue step is the best estimate we can get relating x to y if we didn't know about this z variable, right? Um, if we didn't center, we're not doing that. So that's a reason just to center all your continuous predictors just in general whenever doing multiple regression. It's essential when doing a moderation analysis, uh, but it's helpful in any case. Okay, so that's the conceptual piece. There's also just a mathematical or statistical reason uh, for centering predictors. So it's possible that when you have two predictors in a regression model, let's call them x and z, and then you take the product x times z, it's possible that the product may be highly correlated with one or both of those original predictors, x or z. And if you have two predictors in a regression model, in a GLM that are very highly correlated, then the GLM is just gonna crash. It's not gonna know what to do with that because what you're doing is you're entering two predictors that are basically redundant. And remember how multiple regression works. The regression coefficients, the slopes, or the B values, they represent the unique variance explained in the outcome by each predictor. If two predictors are basically redundant, then it's going to be very difficult to figure out what unique variance either one of them explains and why. So you can actually run into very difficult mathematical computational problems in the matrix algebra if you have two predictors that are very strongly correlated. My students always ask me, well, how much of a correlation is bad and represents multicollinearity. Uh, there's no hard, fast rule of thumb. I typically, my answer is typically anything above 0.8 uh, is, is you're, you're running into uh, treacherous territory. Uh, so if you have two predictors in a regression model that are correlated over 0.8, um, they're pretty redundant and they might cause a problem computationally in the matrix algebra. So you might want to pull one of them out of the regression model. So to sum up this segment, um, centering predictors is real easy. Just take your raw scores, put them in deviation form. Real simple, just create a new column in your data frame in R. And again, the reasons for centering, 
mainly conceptual. It's going to help us interpret the regression constant, uh, but also statistical. It allows us to avoid this problem of multicollinearity.